Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. So I have today with me uh, Suska. Yeah. Suska, where are you from? I'm from Hungary, and I apparently I live in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> That's already a good start. So we wanted to talk to you because you're a trainer. Yeah. You're an international trainer, and you have a very specific kind of work-life balance. Yeah. Actually, if I tell us more. Can sum up. I live uh, like uh, mostly in Portugal, and I spend there like eight months, which is like working online but being engaged into work like one two hours per day, not much, and it's a very nice um, contemplative way of working. And uh, in the rest of that year, of the year, like four months, I spend on training courses, traveling back to Hungary and I'm also a youth worker so I also work with disadvantaged youngsters and um, yeah this is how my one of my year looks like okay so that's very different from the rest of us hamsters probably, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so I mean um, I think one question that pops up to my mind is eight months working one to two hours a day yeah my big fear would be I'm gonna be bored I'm gonna be bored to death. Yes, I know. I know many people who, because there were some people um, who were inspired by my lifestyle and they moved to Portugal for mm -hmm. a couple of months. And the first week that they were they were complaining about it, it was that they are bored and they don't know what to do with their time. And I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I think it's uh, because your mind is uh, very busy mm -hmm. and you want to be busy and yeah. it's just also a learning process of not uh, being busy at that level of that rhythm of that pace but there are different paces and rhythms in this planet and <laughs> then you can also adjust yourself to that and uh, it's and also I guess very there are fulfilling different ways of being busy right exactly it's also busyness the the <laughs> the, the busyness will not stop okay so, so what do you do when you have uh, this more complex contemplative practice that you mentioned <laughs> practice okay <laughs> i never thought of it as a practice but uh, because it was coming very naturally uh, actually i just run my day um, i am i am I, I i i give a lot of time also now it will like um, the, um it, it will sound like a, i don't know a little bit of a fairy tale but i really have time to wake up mm -hmm. so it's not like jumping out of the bed but i I wake up and then I spend time to to think through the thoughts that came up and anything that I am concerned about and then I can make my food in a very slow way, uh, the food that I really want and then I can meet friends and then I have in this non-action or, or, or little action uh, day you but you, you are very very inspired right. by everything that comes to you and you I think a lot in a symbolic way about um, what is going around me and um, and it really um, kind of um, makes me very creative mm. and very passionate also about life in general because of course there is always a lot of happening and also I became much more sensitive about myself like what's going on but it's not like oh I, I sit down meditate for five minutes mm -hmm. and then, oh what do I feel in my little toe no it's it's more about that you uh, I feel a lot of things that is going arising first in my body and then it comes up and then I I, I cry mm -hmm. because I see a beautiful bird or because I see somebody suffering or I see my suffering blah 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 so it's a, a little bit of um, I don't know how to name these kind of things, but it's a little bit of a, a full life experience. Yeah, it sounds like living. <laughs> yes, with little inputs, let's say. Yeah. Sometimes, of course, there are bigger you, you, You're saying a bunch of things that I find very interesting. Well, the way you described your waking up doesn't sound uh, meaningless at all. Or okay. It sounded like something I would love, that you know, you wake up and you take your time to process exactly what you're thinking and you take your time to mindfully prepare your food and you take time for friends and for relationships that you want to build or care for also work yeah and so. also work or creativity or you can yeah, also exactly. be productive wow okay so what does it take for, for for a person who wants to maybe move give steps into having more 
free time and a better work-life balance? What would be your advice? <laughs> Uh, I think that I cannot uh, really speak my own personal experience. I'm 40 years old and uh, I could do this because I gathered a lot of experience before. So I spent my 20s, my 30s with <laughs> eating <laughs> everything in, in the world. Like I was traveling a lot uh, to different continents, also working abroad and also participating full fully into the civil sector, mm -hmm. into the NGO life, social inclusion, whatnot. And I was also a leader of a civil organization. I established it. So actually, this was all feeding my cur curiosity, which it was not a conscious thing to mm -hmm. go through that. But while I'm looking back now, I can see that I wanted to experience everything, to see everything, to see every kind of uh, layers of the society really participate in that to see how to live in a settlement or how to be in a five-star luxurious hotel in Paris mm -hmm. to to see all the extent of our planet let's say <laughs> I'm I have this kind of passion and when <laughs> I got enough which also meaning I had a lot of successes as a as a as somebody who is working in the society or having a profession mm -hmm and also per in, in my personal life and a lot of failures as well, so both. Then somehow I reached the level of, uh, I don't know, satisfaction <laughs> of experiences. Mm -hmm. And that uh, made me um, suitable to step back and to, to, to be uh, proudly saying, oh, I saw that, I, I know mm -hmm. it. It's mm -hmm. okay, I don't need to enter there and don't have an anxiety anymore. No, to I can be like, I can relax, I don't need to repeat it, but I'm this kind of person, so once I have a, have a peak uh, experience about something, I don't have the desire, ah, I want to have it again. It's, mm -hmm. it's okay, I'm so happy it was, even it was a really bad experience. I was also sick for two years, so I had my ups and downs, but uh, somehow this fulfills me, mm -hmm. the experience itself. You were saying something before when we were talking, that you know, in order to do this, you have to lose interest in a lot of things yeah. because you have to say a lot of no to a lot of exactly. possibilities projects ideas interesting ones i guess yes exactly but this is how i can say that mm -hmm. that it doesn't uh, my heart is not broken if mm -hmm. i have to say to something that i don't want to do it because i did it or i did something mm -hmm. similar so therefore i told that i spent the past 20 years with experiencing mm -hmm. a lot and really going into things so it's not a uh, so it's a bit about also respecting your rhythm, like that worked for you before, being yeah. busy, being yeah. active, going everywhere, and now this works for you. As exactly, as it's natural, it's not something I read in books and now I've <laughs> changed my life because according to these five steps. So it's a very natural process. And therefore I can understand that somebody doesn't feel like stepping back, mm -hmm. uh, only feels like tiredness or an anxiety mm -hmm. or bur being burned out and this kind of stuff. Uh, but I, I didn't have that. Uh, I had more that, uh, oh, I want to have a different life experience, mm -hmm. of um, which brings with itself uh, a slower pace, definitely. Great. But it, it also gives a lot of rich, uh, I don't know, rich, being, being, being very richly present in things. I can imagine that yeah. it's taking different things, but like you said, it's not like life stops if you're not working. No. There's a, the busyness of life, our arena world, everything keeps yeah. going on, so it's not that it gets that boring or like... Uh, no, it's not boring. Did your friends after a week found their ways around being a bit quieter? Yeah, actually they made a baby. <laughs> <laughs> now they have a different life. But uh, yes, yes. Yes, it is, but this is a, the first, uh, I think maybe it's also very researched that when you do nothing, and maybe there is also a movement doing nothing, I don't know. Uh, and maybe it's also very researched that first you are panicking because mm -hmm. you lose things, you miss out things, you will be not so productive. Yeah, also, there's a bit of FOMO there, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and I'm also a person who, who is very result oriented, mm -hmm. even if I look like the most. Uh, um, Relax. Lazy <laughs> trainers <laughs> of uh, of my circles, but um, but in in re in reality, no, it's not not that. I, I just really feel that I'm 
very richly participating on a different level, more with contemplation, more with observation. I have less to to say, mm -hmm. also to communicate. I'm more to receive, mm -hmm. listen, tune on, ba ba ba, this kind of stuff. That is great. Thank you so much. This was such a nice sharing. Welcome. And uh, yes, let me know when you're in Portugal. <laughs> Contemplate. I'll join you. I'll join you. <laughs> and, and then you will ask him to. <laughs> what are we doing today? What, okay, doing? what should I what should I look at? <laughs> oh the wings, okay. It's like you can guide me through. And you are like <laughs> little gloves in my hands, not to scratch my yeah. face. One thing I want to say, yes, uh, by myself, because we just had a, a very good conversation with uh, Vitali, mm. uh, which also uh, it's a new thought is that uh, if you as a trainer can define yourself, what is your role in the society? For example, let's say, also my Hungarian name is Shepherd, mm -hmm. actually, Juhász is Shepherd, and uh, that I feel myself as a shepherd or a shepherd dog or mm -hmm. something. So if on the level of the society, I don't need to act all the time. I, mm -hmm. My role is to pay attention to my team, which is well-being or learning, and this is where I need to enter, uh, that this is my talent, this is my quality. And if I know my quality, my ID very well, then also I think uh, it's, you don't spoil your energy to something which is not your task. But it's of course, it's a mm. self-defined thing. But yeah. I think it's important to give definitions, even if it looks very selfish that mm. you just do this, but it's a very important role. It's about respecting also our essences, yeah, right? Exactly. I find that nice. I, I've been that you know who you are. Yeah. And you yeah. are what That's you are known nice. for. That's really hard. Because for me, for example, I identify a lot with my job. I think I identify way too much with my job. So and I, I'm, I, we've had this conversation with different people. And I think we have that problem that uh, in our field, because we are activists, we are militants of these causes, our identity and our professional identity kind of merge maybe a bit too much and that leads us always to feel that we need to be available out, out there doing things for our job and then we are overwhelmed and burned out and whatnot. Yeah, and you have to take care of yourself. Hmm. Otherwise you cannot go for your quality. And then <laughs> <you're not. laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye guys. Ciao. <laughs> Next edition. <laughs>